So capacity is obviously what's driving a lot of this more than anything else. So we, we talk about LTE and 4G services. It's not just a technology. It's really what's driving the technology. And in many cases, and, and definitely in AT&T's case, it's capacity on the network. Um, so there's a, an, another topic, I guess, in about an hour or so we touch on that a little bit further. Um, but since capacity is the key, and LTE brings the benefit of MIMO, obviously WiMAX has MIMO as well, so the most 4G technologies will. We have some minimums that, that we put in place that, that are hopefully going to take us and as well as in many cases our competitors going forward in, into the next generation technologies, uh, such as we require a seven band remote today. All right, so you just heard it mention eight bands coming in the near future. We are already looking for our systems at a minimum support seven. We're in four and five bands, depending on which market we're in in the country right now. We're looking for MIMO service on AWS frequencies and our 700 megahertz frequencies. Where the big challenge comes in in us doing our designs now is there's obviously a cost-benefit analysis. At some point, you have to make the determination between the additional infrastructure and equipment, what is the return on investment from the enhanced throughput we get versus what the billable rates are. Again, you hit it very key already is that uh, as much as we want the enhanced data rates, nobody wants the enhanced prices that typically are associated with that. So we're trying to find ways to increase the spectrum efficiency and the network utilization at the same time. I mean, we hear requirements from the carrier saying, yes, we want eight amplifiers on every pole and they should all be 40 watt each. You can imagine what size of equipment that is. And that's not really what the utilities want to see. So from a neutral host perspective, you can always argue, should I have MIMO or should I have SISO and more nodes? I mean, the SISO configuration is less equipment on more poles, while the MIMO configuration is less poles with more equipment on it. And that's really a strategy and cost and deployment type of trade-off. And there's obviously no answer to that, but uh, that's an interesting challenge. Uh, this is a full-blown block diagram of a <coughs> quad-band system where you have 700 MIMO, 2100 MIMO, GSM 850, UMTS 850, GSM 1900, uh, UM, GSM 1900 and UMTS 9, uh, 1900. So this is a uh, quad-band, eight amplifier type of setup. And this is all illuminated through an X-pole antenna and we have two remote units in parallel uh, on the pole. And this is uh, what we know today with all of the bands that you have available. That is basically the, the sort of most uh, built out configuration. And uh, of course you have to have a migration path forward to move to this configuration from whatever configuration you start off with. And through the modularity and the widebandness of the fiber optic distribution, this can be done. And uh, this is what we are seeing requirements of in some cases. And of course, also, we see requirements where you have 850, 1900, and you want to upgrade on 700, and possibly also 2100. So it's a lot of equipment, not so much at the remote end. It's a, some boxes with amplifiers, but you can do a lot of things in the head end in order to achieve MIMO and diversity received for the, uh, for the other services. Um, as far as the MIMO SISO uh, question, um, you know, for, for simple upgrades, the SISO um, method is, works pretty well for most passive systems and for most customers that, that I see. The, new, the, the, the MIMO, um, you know, I'm going to say it's double the cost, it's, you know, 30 to 50 percent. You know, it really depends on the, on the application and the, and the, the situation it's not necessarily double the speed. So, you know, you really got to look at every single issue of any particular venue you're trying to get into and really uh, it's not a across the board um, decision, you know, I'm going to go MIMO everywhere or SISO everywhere. You got you to look at the customers, you got to look at uh, the, the venue itself and what you're trying to accomplish. We presented this uh, format to show the Pers the throughput speeds um, relative to the baseline. And we're again finding that, you know, both SISO configurations perform less than the baseline, and all of the uh, MIMO and the uh, crossbow MIMO um, configurations perform considerably better. 
especially at the cell edge, which was test point four. And uh, that's all we got.